Good day students, welcome to mathgoodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to graph piecewise defined functions. Before we get started, let's go over the strategy that we're going to employ in graphing um, the piecewise defined functions. So step number one, we're going to uh, plan. This is a very um, intricate process, so it's good to have a plan so you don't get confused while um, constructing the piecewise defined functions. So for the plan, we'll basically draw the number line and uh, plan out which function goes where um, on the coordinate plane. Step two, we're going to graph our partition and label our um, sectioned out planes accordingly um, using the setup that we planned in step one. And then lastly, we're going to graph um, each function in their respective um, planes, paying close attention to inclusion and exclusion at the boundaries that separate uh, the planes. All right, let's take a look at uh, problem number one. We have these uh, steps here for your reference. What if the instructions were for us to graph the function f of x equals uh, 2x plus 1 when x is greater than 1 and um, negative 1 half x minus 2 when x is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so the a part we're to graph and then uh, b part we're to find f of 1 c we're to find f of uh, 2 and then lastly we're to look for um, f of negative 3. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in this uh, problem. Now, uh, step one in our strategy is to formulate a plan. So let's go ahead and do that. We want to see which function goes where in our coordinate system. So to help us stay organized, we're going to draw a number line to give ourselves a visual. Okay, so there goes the number line. Remember, in your number line, when you head towards the right, that's greater. Okay, and then when you head towards the left, that's less. All right, so with that in mind, let's see the partition happens at 1. How do we know that? Well, we look at the number to the right of our functions. These two numbers indicate where the partition happens. So it happens at 1, so we're going to graph our 1. Okay. This is just a uh, one-dimensional representation of our um, two-dimensional graph. Now, um, let's see. We're going to label our functions. Let's call the top function, function one. And let's call the bottom function, function two. Okay, so which function goes where? Remember, all we're just doing here is we're just planning, okay? We're just planning out our graph as indicated in step one. So let's see, x greater than one. Greater is towards the right. So function one is going to be to the right of this partition, excluding the boundary value, okay? So we have an open circle to indicate exclusion, and we're going to be going to the right, okay? So we're going to label that. Let's go ahead and label that. That's re this is region um, 1. And what function goes in region 1? 2x plus 1. That's what we're going to graph in this region. Now, region 2 uh, is going to be the region to the left, the one that's less than. So let's call this region 2. So uh, for the second function, x is less than or equal to 1. That indicates that the boundary point is also included. So it's going to be a closed circle indicating that the function to the left includes the boundary and then we're going to head to the left. So less than heads in that direction. All right, so the function that's active for region two is negative one half X minus one. Okay, so we're done with um, Part one, 
which is to plan out our, our graph on a number line to see which is going where. Now let's go ahead and set up our coordinate system. So let's go ahead and do that. We have our y-axis and our uh, x-axis. Now, after setting up our coordinate system, it's good practice to label it. This is x, this is y. Now, what do we graph first? If we go back to our plan, we have to graph the partition and label the section that planes accordingly, okay? So I'm going to go by, uh, let's do this. So this is one, two, three, four. One, two, three. And then negative one, negative two, one, two. Okay, now, um, where is my partition? My partition is going to be on x equals one. That's the boundary point. So let's go ahead and graph that. In dotted line. Okay, now that we have partitioned our coordinate plane into two regions, um, let's label them properly, okay? Region two is to the left. So this entire half uh, plane right here is region two, and this graph will be going in this region, okay? And then to the right, region one. This function 2x plus 1 will be going into this region right here. Nice. Now we have um, our coordinate plane section now. Now what we're going to do is the last step, which is we're going to graph each piece in their respective um, planes. Okay? So let's start with function number 1. So we want to graph to, uh, y equals 2x plus 1. This is function one. In order to graph a line, we need two things. We need the slope and the y-intercept. Now, this is in y equals mx plus b form. So that easily helps us determine the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is m, the coefficient of x, which is two. We want to write it as a fraction so we know what the run is. So we're going to be rising two units and running one unit. That helps us find the second point. Where is the first point? Well, B, the y-intercept, tells us the first point, which is one on the y-axis, okay? So that goes your y-intercept. So this is sufficient for us to um, generate the graph for the function in region one. So let's go ahead and do it. So starting from one, remember on the y-axis, we have one, that's your y-intercept. You're going to rise to 1, 2, and run 1. Okay? Now, let's see. Oh, it doesn't include the boundary. So that point that's on the boundary right there, we can make it an open circle. So like that. And then you can also um, in the, include another point, rise to 1, 2, run 1. There goes another point. Okay? Now, how do we graph the first line? The first line must reside to the right. It must stay in region one, excluding the boundaries. So we just simply follow this point right here. You can use your ruler and then just draw it through that point like that. Okay, so we're done graphing the first function. Now next we are going to graph uh, function two in region two, this half um, plane right here. All right, let's graph our second function. So our second function is, uh, so let's write it down. We're going to graph y equals negative one half x minus c, <clears throat> minus two. This is supposed to be two right here, minus two. Okay, y equals negative one half x minus two. All right, so to graph this function, we need the slope and the y-intercept. So this is already in y equals mx plus b form. So m is equal to negative 1 over 2. And the y-intercept is negative 2. Okay? So what's the rise and the run here? Since we have negative 1 as a numerator, we'll go down 1. That's a negative rise. And then we'll run 2. Okay? Starting from negative 2. 
Let's go ahead and graph that. Starting from negative 2, so we have it's right here. Starting from negative 2, we're going to um, mark that negative 2. We're going to rise negative 1, which is go down 1, and we're going to run 1, 2. Okay? And then we can plot some points here going down 1 and going. Rising negative 1 and running 2 is the same thing as going up 1 and backing up 1, 2. There goes another point. And then you can do another one right there. Okay? Now, you have to be careful when drawing the second line to make sure that you restrict your graph to um, the appropriate domain, namely being to the left of the boundary, including the boundary line. All right? So, all we'll just do is simply... Um, Connect the dot, draw your line through the points, like that. Now, since the boundary point is included, we're going to have a closed circle right on our partition. Okay? So, there goes the graph of the function. Okay, now we're going to um, advance to the B part. So, the B part, we have to find F of 1. Let's go ahead and do that. So, for B, we have to find f of 1. So question is, where are we going to be at for x equals 1? Are we going to be on the first function, function 1 or function 2? 1 is on the boundary, so the question is, which function includes the boundary x equals 1? It is the second function. So we're going to be plugging in 1 into the second function negative one half x minus two so negative one half instead of x we replace it with one okay uh, minus two so all we're doing is evaluating this function using the second piece uh, if you multiply this right here you write one as one over one multiply across your result will be negative one half minus two and um, 2 can be written as a fraction. And um, we can multiply um, by 2, top and bottom. So we have negative 1 half minus 4 over 2. So it's that negative 1 half minus 4 over 2. And our final answer is negative 5 over 2, okay? Negative 5 over 2 is what f of 1 is. Now, let's take a look at the next one. C, we have to find um, f of what? f of 2. So, for f of 2, what function are we looking at? When x is greater, greater than 1, which includes 2, we're looking at the first function, 2x plus 1. So we're going to be plugging in 2 into the first function, 2x plus 1. So f of 2 is going to be 2 times, instead of x, we'll replace it with 2, our new input, 2x plus 1. So this is going to be 4 plus 1, which is 5. There goes your output. Okay? The last one is f of negative 3. So for f of negative 3, what function are we using? 1 or 2? Negative 3 is less than 1 to the left, so we'll be using the second function, negative 1 half x minus 2. So we have negative 1 half. Instead of x, I'll put in negative 3, okay, minus 2. Let's simplify that. This gives us um, minus times minus is plus, so we have 3 over 2 minus 2. Express this as a fraction. Now we can find the LCD by multiplying both sides. I mean the top and the bottom by 2. So we have 3 over 2 minus 4 over 2. And your final answer is negative 1 over 2. Okay, so that's the last value for um, this problem. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. If you found this tutorial beneficial to you, please give us a thumbs up. We'll uh, appreciate your positive feedback. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. 
if you have any questions about this presentation or graphing um, piecewise defined functions in general, just ask us your question in the comments section below and we'll be glad to address it as soon as possible. More clips can be found on mathcoserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.